Okay. Friends, I'm glad to see all of you and hope that you can see me in this adjustment of uh, technology. I'm thankful that we have technology, but I sure do look forward to an opportunity to exchange ideas with you and to just talk with you and hear your questions and your comments and your stories about how your faith has been made alive, brought to life uh, through the study of scripture. And that's our topic today, the study of scripture as a spiritual discipline as we become more faithful and fruitful disciples of Jesus Christ. To me, Bible study is an essential practice. Whether you study the Bible individually or in a group or both, the daily reading of scripture is fundamental to our faith as Christians. The Bible is God's living word to us. And we're invited this month to read the Gospel of Luke, one chapter a day, six days a week. So if you're following this model, you're well into this Gospel. What is it that you notice about Luke's message? How is it similar to and how is it different from the other Gospels? Matthew, Mark, or John? I have to tell you, Luke's my favorite writer of the four Gospels because he shows us a side of Jesus that the others don't. Luke's Jesus is a vigorous champion of the outsider. Jesus himself was an outsider born to a poor family, to a young unwed mother, in a, and was born in a town that was small and insignificant by any standard. Luke also was the, the only Gentile among all the Jewish cast of New Testament writers. And he recalled stories of Jesus' life and interactions with women and children and common laborers racially different people like the Samaritans, all who were typically treated as outsiders by a religious establishment at that time. Now for these and all who feel disregarded or hopeless or worse, Jesus offers a word, your lives matter. Jesus offers love and mercy and radical hospitality to all of them, all of us. Now, you also probably know that Luke wrote a sequel to his gospel. It's called The Acts of the Apostles, and it tells the story of the birth of the church. All the pivotal moments in the early days of the Christian movement were signs of God's activity through followers of Jesus. God was and still is today speaking through the scriptures and through the experiences of Christians trying to live faithfully in very uncertain times. But how do you know what the Bible says or what it means? 66 different books of the Bible, reflecting the work of a lot of different authors, originally written in the language of the streets, the style that most people use when they're not trying to sound religious, this is the unfolding story of God's love for the world, <clears throat> for all living things, and God's call upon disciples to continue the work that he began at creation. We're reminded that the creation story begins with trees, and the whole story in Revelation ends with trees. And everything in between is about God's appreciation, hope, and ordering of life for all living things. The Bible has been translated into almost every known language, and yet it's hard to grasp the meaning of it all. Boiled down, we cling to this promise, that God so loved the world that he sent his Son. And the sharing of good news that God wants all of us to live in hope and to know love is more powerful than brokenness or bias or hate. Can I show you something? It may help us to understand how challenging Bible study really can be. Take a look. Focus on this for a while. David is holding it up for us. I hope you're able to see the words 
and to try and discern that message. It's not an IQ test and it's not intended to um, reflect one's biblical knowledge, but it does illustrate why the scriptures may be hard to understand. Well, as I speak to a class of Bible study pros and enthusiasts, this may seem silly or unnecessary to say, but when you select a Bible, select one that has accessible language. One that has some study aids like footnotes or commentary about how to apply this word to everyday life and trust that it will be helpful to read it. Remember, as it's been said in 2 Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient equipped for every good work. Friends, I bet I've prepared five different versions of this month's focus on spiritual practice of Bible study. There is so much I want to say, so much I think is important, so much that facilitates growth in faith, so much that inspires our mission. But I think it's best to keep it simple and uncomplicated. I borrowed this phrase, it's not biblical, but in a word, when it comes to Bible study, just do it. Just do it. Okay. If you need a roadmap to know uh, where to start your personal study, please let me know. If you prefer a structured study with a group with, with at least one accountability partner, call Donna Pinkney. If you want to know what version of the Bible is best for you, might I suggest that any one of the pastors of the church would be delighted to explore options with you, and I would as well. If you worry that this will take too much time, I promise you, it does take time to prepare for eternity, but it's worth it. If you want to know God, read this, at least one of them, God's love letter to you and to the whole world. Just do it. God bless you.